Okay guys, I'm back. Did you miss me? Cuz I missed you. <laughs> you guys has it been a hot minute i'm not even going to try to guess how long it's been because it'll make me sick to my stomach but all that matters is that i'm back i never actually thought i would start youtube again i kind of just felt like it was a thing for a while and it was gone and in the past and i moved on from it but the more I thought about it each and every day, I was like, I have to post again. Like, I still get everyone's comments. Um, people even comment on my Instagram, my TikTok. They're like, Danielle, where have you been? Why are you not posting? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I know. I loved YouTube. It was literally one of my favorite things to do when it was such a thing for me to do. Um, but now that just being a hairstylist and being so busy and having such a busy, chaotic life, I put it on the back burner to focus on my career and just myself as a whole. But I really want to do YouTube again. I want to get back on track. I want to post hairstylist vlogs, show you guys what I've been up to, what I'm doing. Um, I feel like this coming year is going to be an exciting one. I don't know why, I just feel it and I'm manifesting it and I just want to start YouTube again. So here we are. So to start off this new era, <laughs> I don't even want to call it an era because we've already had our YouTube era, but this is just rekindling things. I'm going to be doing like a little get ready with me kind of catching you guys up on what's been going on um a couple weeks actually not even weeks when even was this august august i asked you guys on instagram to either ask me questions or just anything pertaining to youtube and like a get ready with me so some of you guys asked me really good questions just some catching up and yeah so let's just jump right into it because we have a lot of things to unfold so we are literally three months away from the new year and it's just insane um this year has been chaotic to say the least uh, we'll break everything down but today i am supposed to be working but i actually took the day off just because i had clients cancel and I moved my other clients around to other days just so that I could finally have a day off. And I'm like, what better way than to do my YouTube video? Because I finally have time to do it. So I have a nail appointment later. So I'm just going to kind of, I guess, get ready for that. <laughs> even though half the time I don't even care what I look like at the nail salon because I'm like this staring at the TV. I actually hate going to get my nails done. Fun fact about me. Um, but I have to because without my nails, I, I just, I don't feel like myself. But yes, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, this is my third year as a hairstylist. My like three year anniversary was actually last week. And it's just crazy that it's been that long already. I feel like I just started a couple months ago but no it's been three years and I still love it more than ever so so many of you wrote just like life updates in general so I mean we'll just get the bare minimum out of the way um so I'm still with my boyfriend we're going strong our eight year was actually a couple weeks ago and we're gonna go to New Hampshire next weekend and I'm so excited to just have a little getaway. Um, I'm still at the same salon. I will not be leaving anytime soon. My sister had a baby. Um, he's already almost eight months old. He is literally, uh, 
I just love him so much. Like, experiencing my love for him as an auntie gets me so excited to experience it as a mom. Oh my god, like, I just can't wait. It solidifies even more how much I want to be a mom. Not anytime soon. But yes, love him to death. I watch him every Monday, actually. I babysit him. And my stepbrother also had their baby, too. He is almost two months old. So getting all these babies in the fam and becoming my little auntie era. <laughs> and I love it. I just, ugh, they're so cute. And then honestly, other than that, I've just been thriving as a hairstylist um i've just been growing so much like my clientele has been growing um i'm getting busier and busier in the salon which i'm so grateful and thankful for and i just genuinely love my job like people always say if you truly love your job it never feels like work um and i'm not gonna lie some days I am like, oh my god, I don't want to be here. <laughs> but like, who doesn't think that in their mind? Like, at least once every so often. But no, genuinely, I love my job. I'm obsessed with it. I love all of my clients. And I just love going to work. Because it never truly feels like work. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like that's the only real like big life updates nothing like too exciting is happening yet <laughs> but yeah i'm just so excited for this new year i feel like so many things good are gonna happen at least i'm manifesting it and just so you know i just put on a tiny bit of tinted moisturizer this one is the bare minerals one and it's in the shade natural pecan it's pecan by the way all right what else do we have on here so i did have someone ask are you fully comfortable doing any kind of hair and also someone asked um what is your favorite services do you specialize in anything and do you say no if you aren't comfortable with a service so i feel like those two kind of go hand in hand so i kind of like to say that i specialize in lived in hair to most people they're like what the hell does that even mean <laughs> but if you're a hairstylist you get it i just feel like and this is not coming at anyone at all like if you are a blonde specialist a brunette specialist a haircut specialist that is amazing but personally i don't know i just don't feel like i would consider myself a specialist in one thing rather than the other i love doing everything i love doing all colors so i almost feel like if i were to put out there that i specialize in blondes then what if a brunette is like oh well if she only specializes in blondes like why would i go to her i'm gonna go somewhere else but i love doing brunettes i love doing coppers redheads like blondes i love doing any type of lived in color high maintenance color ew i got powder in my mouth um <laughs> like i just love doing all color so i don't really technically put out there that i specialize in anything because i don't want a client to view that the wrong way and be like oh well if she only specializes in that then I'm gonna go somewhere else but if we're getting technical i would say i specialize in more lived in color which really all that means is like most of my clients i feel like can go six to eight months without getting their highlights done and just because of how lived in it is it grows out so seamless that they don't have to worry about coming so often if that makes sense i feel like i have a lot of college students and they very rarely can even come see me so the more low maintenance and the more lived in the better 
but yeah so i'd say like my favorite service is definitely just like a full head of tz lights super like blended and rooted at the top and just like ugh, i love doing tz lights they like if you are wanting to achieve that lived in look it just gives the most soft like blended look and that doesn't even go for like a specific color like tz lights with any color blondes brunettes coppers reds like just any tz light placement is my favorite service and then honestly i wouldn't really say i say no to a service the only time i would say no is if i don't think it's gonna suit you one thing i've learned over the years is to just be super upfront with your client because 90 percent of the time they're going to appreciate it you may get that one client that's like i could care less what you say this is what i want and then you're just like okay fine i'll do it then if that's really what you want but i feel like all of my clients get me and they know like I will be 100% honest with them if I don't think it's a good suit for them. So other than that, I don't really say no, but even the services that like I don't like doing, I don't have clients that do them. So <laughs> I think the <laughs> only thing I'd probably say no to is a perm. Absolutely not. I will 100% recommend you to someone else, but no. <laughs> I will never, ever do a perm, even if my life depends on it. <laughs> All right, so I just did a little bit of powder and some bronzer. And honestly, like lately, this is all I've been doing for my face is just tinted moisturizer, powder, and bronzer. Nothing crazy. All right, what else do we have on here? Oh, do you still chair rent? Would you recommend commission or rental? Blah, blah, blah. So yes, I still rent my chair. I've been renting my chair for two years now and I recommend it 100%. I mean, honestly, I have gotten so many people coming at me in the comment section of my booth rent versus commission video. I don't know where I went wrong in that video, but like people were coming for me. They were like, oh my God, booth renting is not that much better commission is blah 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 and I was like whoa this is just my opinion like everyone is different but I just genuinely feel like booth renting is so much better but everyone has their own opinions I'm not telling anyone like you have to rent or you won't be successful that's not true but just for me and in my opinion I think it's better if you want to go watch that video you can but just to kind of sum everything up booth renting you are literally your own boss you just pay to work where you're working and I love being my own boss because I can control everything I can make my own schedule I keep track of everything on my own I don't have to worry about anyone else other than myself yes I get where people are coming from with okay, even though you're making 100% of the profit, you still have to buy product and you still have to pay for your chair and you still have to pay for this and this and this. Yeah, that's the point. But even if it equals out that when you're on commission, like even though you're making a percentage, the salon pays for everything else. Okay, but you're only making a percentage and you're not your own boss so you can't control anything literally anything so it has all of its ups and downs it has its pros and cons it has its differences but for me and in my opinion booth renting is the best case scenario for me i am doing amazing as a booth renter and i'm so glad i decided to do that as soon as i did but yeah I am still booth renting. I also got a lot of questions about like um, what helped you grow the most as a baby stylist, what helped grow your clientele and just like stuff like that. I've done a bunch of videos talking about that um, 
But I genuinely just feel like Instagram was the main source for me when I was first starting out. I was putting out all of my work and showing people what I was capable of and everyone loved it. But I feel like now that it's been three years, I kind of have my set clients and occasionally I have a new client. And that is like the number one goal as a hairstylist is to eventually have that set client list and then occasionally have a new client or even for some hairstylists getting to that point where you can't even accept new clients because you have such a good set list of your OG clients. Um, I'm not there yet because it only has been three years but um, yeah I would say 80 percent of my clients like are consistent I've had them before they come frequently and then the other like 15 20 percent is new clients so I'm getting close to that point but not quite yet but that's like a huge goal for baby stylists I feel like um and I'd say another thing that helped me get there is just client experience, like making sure when you do have a new client, you give them the best experience that you can so that they will come back. Whether it's just the way you uphold a conversation, if it's literally the way you do their hair, <laughs> like if you don't do a good job, obviously they're not going to come back. Um, listening to them, styling them well, like just making them feel their best version of them while they sit in your chair. There's just so many different factors and like I said I've talked about it before in other videos but yeah just posting your work, putting yourself out there and giving the best client experience. Oh my god so this is super cute. It said about what time in your career did you think you saw the most growth slash light bulb moment? I think that is such a cute question. Honestly, I feel like one of my biggest like light bulb moments was probably the summer of my first year. So I started in the fall my first year as a hairstylist and then this summer was when I just was like getting a lot of recognition on Instagram and a bunch of people were messaging me saying oh my gosh like you did my friend's hair it came out awesome I want you to do my hair and I was super busy that summer and it just really made me feel good about myself and it truly I guess lit out lit off that light bulb moment of like okay this is what I was meant to do and from then forward, I just kept growing and I was like, this is amazing. Like, what is happening? And I just feel like growing in such a short period of time really made me realize like, okay, this is my life and I'm so glad I finally figured out what I was meant to be on this earth for and what I was meant to do and it just really really made me feel good so probably the summer is my answer the summer of 2021 <laughs> oh my gosh so another question was have you ever messed up someone's hair and didn't know what to do fingers crossed knock on wood um this has only happened to me once and when I say like messed up someone's hair I'm talking like messed up someone's hair not like a client went home and was like I don't know if like I like this tone or I don't think I'm blonde enough I don't consider that messing up um but my mess up client was my first year as a hairstylist <laughs> and of course it had to do with box dye and I just was new nervous new client I was just like okay like we're just gonna highlight her and it's fine I should have done a test strand because I highlighted this girl's whole entire head and we went to go rinse it out and it was not 
looking good at those ends. It was <laughs> gummy and dead and yeah. It was a panic attack and a half, I would say the least. I don't even remember when that was. I think it was only like four months into me being a hairstylist. Um, so that was like messed up someone's hair. Um, I guess I like didn't know what to do in the five minutes of panic because I was like, uh, this girl's hair is literally dead. What, what do I do? So I just pretended like everything was fine at first. So I went in the back and I was just venting to one of my coworkers. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? I, what do I do? <laughs> so we tried to do treatments, it didn't work. So I was just upfront with her. I was like, hey, told her what happened, told her I tried to do treatments. Um, and we ended up having to cut off like four or five inches of her hair. And I felt so bad. I literally went home crying. I was like, oh my God, I'm in the wrong business. I just messed up this girl's hair. I'm never doing hair ever again. <laughs> Honestly, it is what it is. It happens. Don't let it get to you. Um, because now looking back, it was clearly a learning experience. Um, should have done a more in-depth consultation, should have done a test strand, blah, blah, blah. But like I said, knock on wood, fingers crossed, since that day, I have never messed up someone's hair, like, bad if that makes sense. And then the last one that I got, which is perfect for the last one, is what are your long-term goals as a hairstylist? So I feel like this is kind of like a different one than most people would say, but honestly, my long-term goal is to just grow each year, whether that be with clients, whether that be with profit, um, whether that be on Instagram, I just love growth. And this could be in any part of my life, even if it has nothing to do with my career. Just growth as a person, growth as a hairstylist, growth in achieving my goals and accomplishments for what I want in the future. Like, I just thrive off of growth. I'd say that's probably one of the biggest things. And then I feel like the next one is a little bit more basic, but obviously one of my long-term goals is to eventually open up my own salon. Um, I get questions all the time about that, whether it's like something I think about, if it's something I want to do. Definitely is something I think about and I'm like pretty sure I want to do it in the future, but just not anytime soon. I don't really like putting timelines on anything. I feel like living life is easier when you just have the mindset of when the time is right, the time is right. I don't really like putting timelines on life events. It just makes you more stressed out. But yeah, so other than growth, I'd say opening up my own salon. I think it's like tough too because seeing all of the work that really goes into owning your own salon is so stressful and then on top of it like I feel like the next most stressful thing is finding employees obviously but yeah like I said when the time is right the time is right and I'm only 23 so there is no rush whatsoever well would you look at that finished my little light makeup right on time other than my face i literally just did my eyebrows and some mascara and that's pretty much it but yes so that concludes this video i really hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you guys are as excited as i am to be back on youtube comment down below any type of video that you want to see from me. Obviously, I'm definitely going to be doing vlogs and hairstylist days in my life, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm so excited to be back. I love you guys. I missed you guys so much. And I will see you in my next video. Oh my god, my outro. I have to do it. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys.